All right. I'm not actually that good against Fox myself. I'm not that good in general, but uh, against Fox specifically, I'm not that good. And just in general, I'm not that good. So I might not be able to help you out too much, but uh, I'm going to look through at least part of this VOD and see if I see anything that you can work on. I haven't watched this yet. Also, it's 26 minutes, so I might not. I might just do the first set of grands. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I'll watch this for you. Okay, there's no reason for him to go off the stage in the first place, but uh, you can keep hit hitting him there. I'm not too good at what you should do hitting Fox off stage in this situation. I'm very good, or I'm very bad at edge guarding him. So I'm not sure what you should do here, but the obvious downside to doing this is that he can tech it, and forward air has a lot of lag afterwards. Neutral air doesn't have much lag, but it has a lot of uh, lasting frames where you're stuck in the move. So yeah, that's an easy stock if he doesn't tech it for whatever reason. Um, this would... I'm gonna go full screen. There's no reason not to. But uh, there's no reason to buffer a forward air out of that. What you were probably doing is you were probably buffering like a down air or something. Yeah, probably a down air moving forward. So, there's something called, uh, what I like to call the double buffer glitch. I don't know what people generally call it. Some people don't know it's a thing, for whatever reason. It's very important to know this because it's a uh, cause of a lot of disinput in this game. When you buffer, so you couldn't do this in Smash 4, but, uh, you can buffer both a jump and an aerial at the same time. Or you can buffer multiple inputs at the same time. So, say I'm landing from there and I'm holding Y and A, right? It buffers a short hop neutral air. Now, there's a glitch where I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna buffer short hop neutral air, so just Y and A, and move left at the same. Actually, that's not a good example. I'm going to hold Y and up on the C stick, so it doesn't up air, right? I'm gonna try to buffer that, but uh, move left. And you see that I will always do a back air here. That is because, for whatever reason, if you buffer both a jump and a C-stick input at the same time, it takes the direction for your aerial from your left stick. So, after you got hit by Fox and you were moving to the right, say you buffered a jump and a down air, right? You'll get a forward air. Which is unfortunate. So, if you want to buffer a short, not short hop, but if you want to buffer a down air out of hit stun, You'll want to hold Y down on the C stick, and well, not Y, but you're, you want to hold your jump button down on the C stick, and also down on the left stick at the same time. So let me get a uh, let me get a webcam in here real quick. All right, can I weigh this down? Ah, hopefully you can see this. But, uh, let me flip this. Alright, there we go. There's no light in here, but whatever. You can still see my input well enough. That's how you buffer it. Oh, this is actually flipped, but whatever. You get the point. Whereas, that's getting the wrong aerial. I should probably fix that webcam, because I'm going to use, uh, I'm probably going to have to use it later on. But whatever. I'll do that later. Let's keep watching. Now, what is this spaghetti interaction that happens here? Lots of rolls and dash attacks. For some reason you're using back air as your poke tool. Landing with down air, not getting too much off of it. Landing with forward air is not too good either. Yeah, you can see that one of the downsides of landing with forward air here. Where is it? Here? Yeah. You went above him. 
you can land. So the f- landing with the first two hits of forward air or back air has good follow ups, but it's very difficult to time, and it also doesn't have that much range, and it's not active very long. One of the most obvious things to do while landing is Nair. Landing Nair is kind of busted. If it combos well, it has almost no lag. It's almost safe on shield. You do it like perfect timing down here. It's uh, minus four on shield, which almost nothing hits minus four. Yeah, see that? It's like you almost did it. Like, and then if you hit it while landing, you get a dash There we go. Um, let's see, what did you use to try to punish that? Okay, if someone hits your mult, if someone multi jabs your shield, let me switch over here. Okay, the rate I'm going at with this, I might not even do like the whole first set. <laughs> Cause it will actually take me an hour. Let me plug in another controller here. Hold up, let me make sure my mic is... Okay, yeah, my mic's working. Okay, there's... Someone posted a video on this not too long ago, but if somebody multi jabs your shield, it just rolls through it. After it hits your shield 11 times. Just buffer the... And just do whatever you want. This is the easiest punish. To do that. The easiest fast punish would be... Shield to regenerate. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, if you can't roll through the shield, the other option is that once you get pushed out of the range, jump won't force you to parry. And also, if you're just in front of him smashing a rapid jab, down smash comes out frame four. Does a decent amount of damage. That's pretty far. Damage. Let's try that. Yeah, okay, you wanna jump. Because it works just like Med Knights, where if he rapid jab the shield, and then you let go, it parries it. Which, something to know about Med Knights jab, if you do jab someone's shield and they don't roll through, most characters can roll through. Not all, but uh... If they parry it, you can let go of your jab, and like, you'll hit them during their parry animation. Well, not during it, but like, they can't do anything out of it. It's too slow. The other option is I mentioned earlier. Like, that will auto-parry. At that distance, I got pushed back. But uh... Yeah, hopefully that helps. I haven't tried it against Fox's jab ever, so it looks like I'm doing something wrong. That's because I am. Yeah, you could jump over it. It's not too good, because Med Knight's airspeed's not that good. Or just wait for it to fully... Oh. Yeah, he can roll through if you mash it. Probably. Maybe not if you're too far. I don't know. You check. Not me. <laughs> okay, let me see. What did I down tilt? I think I missed it anyways. Whatever. It's not bad. Uh, practice reacting to trips. Because you can react to whenever you're down tilt trips, if you're fast enough. Oh, it was close. You didn't react fast enough to the hit, which is very difficult. Yeah, that's one of the things that I have to uh, work on personally against Fox, 
is hitting his recovery. Because I feel like that is what makes or breaks the matchup for me personally. Letting go of shield and down tilting the wrong direction is very poor. I would probably do a full hop down air on his shield just to get out of the situation. Nair is pretty good if you know he's going to drop shield because that'll usually trade and be favorable. But uh, when two people are facing each other's shield, you don't want to be the one facing behind, generally. There's no reason to run backwards there. Also, I feel like you're running way too much. It's not too bad because you can do any option out of a run now, but uh, hmm, how do I describe this? How would I even say this? But uh, right now when he's off stage, your focus should be on making sure he doesn't get stage control back. Whereas when you run sort of back and forth, it's pretty clear that you just want to force. Mo well, hmm. I can't comment on that, but you should be by the ledge trying to keep him outside of stage control because he has very limited options by the ledge. You can. Look this up if you want a good video on stage control and ledge trapping slash edge guarding. That's a very poor decision. Actually, let me see what you tried doing. Well, I'll, I want to make sure you know what to do when you're by ledge and getting off. Okay. You could have pushed that better, but you did. You killed him. It worked. <clears throat> yep, there's another one of the weird situations with Jab where you don't really want to parry it. I feel like Fox's jab, specifically, interacts weird with parries, because some of his multi-jab doesn't reach as far as the other hits, whereas Med Knight's always hits in the same spot. Uh, you should have A-landed there. Or even jumped, or air-dodged, or teched. Well, teching might not even be better. But you should have A-landed, or jumped, or air-dodged. You didn't push your hits well here. So how do you get stage back? Okay, he gives it back for free. When he shines right in front of you there... Come on, let's see it. Okay, when he goes down, misses his shine, that's a free opportunity to hit him off stage. Honestly, in this situation... I feel like down air especially would be good. He's not at high percent, so down air will just... It doesn't send him far, it just puts him in a little bit of stun where it messes up where he's trying to recover from. And it might force him to recover from this angle. Or at least... He still has a jump, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he just makes it back after that. But you should have hit him immediately after he messed up his shine with a forward air or back air. And you could have kept going after that if he missed a tech. But he shouldn't miss a tech. It's quite easy to tech in this game. Alright, you made it back on stage. Let's see what he does. He misses a landing forward air, so you dash attack him for it. This is not a good angle to be sent at, because you don't get too many follow-ups. You can just forward air here. That's probably what you want to do. Up tilt doesn't hit him because he's too far away, so he jumps. This is a good spot, personally, I think it is, because he's on top of you with no jump. So if you can try to juggle him with disjointed up airs, that would be pretty good. Okay, you did exactly what you should have, and he air dodges here. Again, no jump, no air dodge. So if you throw something at him, he can't jump over it to dodge it, and he also can't air dodge to dodge it. So he's very limited in options here. Hitting him with like a, a back air, just falling out of this up air, would probably frame trap him. You could probably also nair if you drift well enough. Hopefully you're using your C-stick for all of your aerials, besides neutral air. Alright, jump down air. That will not hit him. Also, it looks like it skipped a bunch of frames on the VOD, which is very unfortunate. 
it helps a lot to s in situations like that it helps to see everything that happens now from here honestly he's already able to get off of ledge so you'll probably want to sit above ledge and try to cover his options with nair if he rolls it's pretty difficult to punish but you can cover neutral get up get up attack and jump very well with nair from this spot and he can't really drop ledge hit you from here either Okay, I didn't even see what you landed with, because I took so long. Okay, on ledge. He read your option. Either that or you just got up into it. Letting you back on stage for free. Put him off stage. Yeah, you committed to neutral air before he chose an option. Now, let me go back a second here to when after you hit him off stage. Okay, in here you're only dashing. So a very good spot to be when trying to cover or hold stage is as close as possible just outside of his range. Or even when he's getting off of ledge, you want to be just in the middle to cover every option. But uh, once he's actually on stage, you want to be just outside of his range here. So he's very limited in options, and you can punish him. Okay, so he rolls. You throw him back off. That's good. Now see here, what I don't like is you dashing back and forth here, where your best place to be is in between your dashes right here, if you're not going to hit him. You could also dash forward and try to like forward air him there, but uh, in between is probably where you want to be. Okay, that's Fox's get up or a uh, ledge attack is kind of deceptive where he pulls back after he does it usually you can't against almost every character you can't forward smash in a spot where get up attack will miss you and you'll hit them after so just don't try to do it there if you see them get up attack and for whatever reason you're not holding shield just dash attack to punish it or dash grab or dash down smash don't try to forward smash it it's not a good option Okay, if he's right in front of you, there's not really a reason to jump neutral air, because he could have just let go of shield and hit you. <clears throat> okay. Okay, holding stage there. You have to be very careful with forward smash, especially, in my opinion, if you're here and Fox is there, right, and you're trying to keep him from getting stage control and just pus pushing your uh, advantage, it's not a good idea to forward smash, because it's way too slow for that. Forward smash comes out frame 24, active one frame. If they go for any option to hit you, they'll beat out forward smash, because forward smash comes out way too slow. Forward smash is a good option when you're more further apart, and he's trying to approach you, and he has to respect it. If you're that close, and his best op and it well, not his best option, if you're that close, and his only option is to run at you, don't forward smash, because him running at you is faster than forward smash. You'd want to use F tilt, down tilt, any aerial, especially down air or neutral air. The downside to neutral air is that you can't, if you do a rising neutral air, it has too much lag. So I'll show you over on the game. Is that if you have control here, you can very easily approach like from right there. That's not hard. Now the problem with rising neutral air is you get stuck in it kind of. Whereas if you do like that, if you delay it, it's a lot better. Those are sort of the options you want to use to box someone out when they don't have many options. Because if you're Fox here, Actually, let me just take control of the other controller to show you. If you're Fox here, your only options are run at you, dash to ledge, in which case you can't move back any further, jump off stage, which is obviously a bad option, and jump over you, which is, again, a bad option, because you can punish Fox's landings a lot better than he can land.
10k. Grabbing out of shields very poor as Meta Knight. His obvious times. Oh, that was good. You read his jump. Oh, nice. I would have like neutral air to forwarded there, but NATO works just fine, assuming he does it. The downside to NATOing there is he could not use side B and recover below you. But if you do do a forward air or a neutral air, then you'll drop below him and he could recover above you. I think he already used his jump though. I'm not sure. I didn't pay attention. If he already used his jump, then he had to recover horizontally or low. So neutral or forward air would be best. How far are we? Oh, it doesn't actually say on here. Dang. I've probably been recording for like 10, 15 minutes. Okay, PS2. Actually, let me take a look at the stages. I'm not sure. Actually, I don't even know your stage list, so I'm not sure if I can do like a quick overview. I'll try anyways. So... And what else is a starter? Usually town. I'm just going to assume you're using the same rule set that was at Frostbite and the one that Michigan uses, except with three bands. So, what else is usually counter pick? Yoshi's Brawl. Uh, you guys probably don't have... I'm going I'm to assume it's a conservative stage list. I'm just going to assume that this is it. So, although there is, isn't there Unova? What other one am I missing? Because I feel like there's another one that's popular that I'm missing. Huh. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But, uh, of these stages against Fox, I would like... So Fox will kill you regardless of the stage size, so I don't think it's a bad idea to pick a smaller stage, Blast Zone-wise. Granted, there aren't many small Blast Zone stages in this game. Uh, I think not having platforms is extremely good, because Fox can extend his combos on platforms. And generally, he can reach very high in the air, especially jumping off of platforms, very quickly. So I'm not a fan of platform stages on him, so FD and Kalos would be my personal recommendations. The downside to Kalos is the ceiling. So FD, I would have probably number one against Fox. PS2 seems pretty good. Town is pretty flat, but the ceiling is way too high. So that's like a maybe. PS2, I'd probably... Hmm. I'd probably put just in between those two. Although the downside to Kalos is it has walls, so I'd actually put that below it too. Smashville. That sounds like a good one for him. He can use the platforms very well on that stage, so you have to watch out for it. But uh, having generally small blast zones and the corner stage layout with no walls, it's good for gimping him. Because oftentimes against Fox, you want to hit him under the stage and not so much uh, into it like you would on Kalos. I find it very hard to edge guard Fox on Kalos and Yoshi's Brawl. Yoshi's Brawl, the blast zones are fine, but uh and actually the slants might mess him up, but I don't like the platform for it and I don't like the walls. So I put that low. And then Battlefield I don't think is worth picking against Fox at all. I think you should probably ban Battlefield just because of the platforms. None of them seem awful for Meta Knight though. So Going to PS2 is not a bad idea. If Lilat's legal for you guys, I think that's a pretty good stage against Fox because it's there's almost no area by the ledge. There's no walls, obviously, and like the corner of it's very small, so it's very easy. Like the forders you did that first stock, those would hit below the stage. So even if he texts it, it's very weird. But the platforms are good for extending combos from him, so you have to watch out for that. I haven't thought about stages too much for this matchup beforehand. I would have liked to land with a neutral air there, but it's not too big of a deal. You could have reacted to the down tilt tripping with a grab or a dash attack, but hitting another down tilt into down smash is true and does pretty good damage, so it's not a bad option.
Yeah, you could have frame trap up air naired him there. Uh, I would have liked to grab him to send him off stage, but that works. So this is not hitting anyone. And also doing a rising neutral air has a lot of lag, like I showed before. See, you're <laughs> he uses side B after that, and you're still in lag from neutral air. Weird option. I personally don't really use drill, because like that will never kill him. Even at like 130, that's not going to kill him, using a drill onto stage. And if he shields it, drill in this game is extremely unsafe on shield. You used to be able to go through people's shield and bounce, and have it more safe than before. But now the shield just eats it all, and it does like no shield damage. So I personally wouldn't use drill unless it's safe. Or like, unless you know that they're not going to be able to just shield it like that. Yeah, not doing a very good job at putting out hitboxes to avoid Fox from just running at you. Neutral air against spaces in particular is very strong, because it's one of your only few moves that can uh, stuff him out. Ah, oh, you're very close to edge guarding him there. So let's look at that again. Okay, if you want to... Let me show you something. Oh, that's the wrong controller. Okay, if you send someone off stage and you want to edge guard them close to them, you did like that. You can, uh,. If you do an up air or a down air or any aerial while you jump, you'll stay facing the opposite direction, so you'll be in spot for either a back air or the starting hitbox of neutral air. Neutral air, it's very hard to see without like a hitbox visual, but actually let's go frame by frame for this. Neutral air's hitbox starts behind him like that. Or at least it did before. It might not anymore. But. You see where the hitbox is on it. The hitbox is only on the sword. Actually, let's see. Does it have a hitbox? Yeah, it doesn't have a hitbox on the start. It's actually not on, only on the sword anymore. It's inside of him. But let's try behind. I'm a bit above him. That's not gonna hit him until. Oh, it actually doesn't start in the front anymore. But it does hit on the first rotation. So actually, disregard what I just said. That's not true anymore. It's just if you want to back air, if you want to do that. But in general, if you're getting off stage, just hold the right direction and just jump. Or if you want to be facing the other way, just do like a RAR off stage, and then every time you jump, you can air it. And you'll be right over here. Now, let me find this for you. Now this, I have a timestamp here 900 seconds in to this video. You can look this up afterwards. This is Mewtwo King explaining the concept of threat zone in the game. But basically, when you have someone off stage and... Can I get him off stage to show this? Okay, so this is not the greatest spot to be in, but uh, when you're in this position against Fox, Fox is in a very poor spot because he has to recover. He's limited on time, because if he doesn't do anything, he'll just fall down. He's far from the stage. So he's extremely limited in options, and he can't hit you from where he is. None of his moves will reach you. 
So this entire time, while he's getting back to stage, you can float next to him at this range where you're just outside of all of his moves. And uh, if you, you can either just run up and try to hit him with like a forward air, forward air back air, or neutral air. Neutral air is a bit riskier because the hitbox isn't as far reaching, so he has more time to react. He might have too much time, depending on where you are. But forward air and back air especially, you can just jump forward and do that, and he can't react to it. So if he's at 84 and I do that right here, well not right here, but further out where you were in that position, that will just kill him. Now, the other option is you keep falling with him and have the whole time threaten that unreactable forward air or back air. And uh, at any time you could just jump and do it, but if he does anything, like say he jumps, well, he doesn't. Yeah, he can jump. Say he jumps, air dodges, does it, starts up a side B, starts up an up B, just jump forward and hit him. Anyways, you're in that position that I just talked about. I have to scroll back a second. Where you get off stage right next to him in the unreactable forward air and back air position that I just mentioned. And you see what he does? He does a shine that has a lot of lag and he stalls here. Very easy to hit him. Jump forward air, that will kill him right here. However, you jump more, which would have kept you in threat zone range, and you see he side bees. Now here, what you could have done instead of neutral airing is jump more and just down B over here. Now you're off stage. You down B back to stage for free. That's alright. Miss a dash attack. Tipping him with that. Okay, you don't get in position. Alright, yeah, you never... At ledge, you're just throwing out... Every, every time I've seen you in this position, you've just thrown out a move. Or dashed back and forth. That's not good. You want to sit there and force him to use an option. It's Every time you do any action in this game, you have to think about... Well, you don't have to think while you're doing it, but in when you're, anal when you're analyzing your play, you have to think about what that action is actually doing. Right? If you watch top-level players, especially if you watch more slower-paced top-level players, which is almost everyone, honestly, than this, but uh, certain characters can play this way. Not play this way, but certain characters take advantage of this a lot. If you watch like a Diddy player in Smash 4, don't watch Smash 4 because it's a dead game, but watch like an Olimar player. That's a good example. Watch how they abuse stage control, and you'll notice how much slower and like how more patient they play. What else is... Now this is very specific to watch, but... Alright, so there is this VOD that Hungrybox had yesterday. Where he's playing against Kesev on Wi-Fi. Playing Snake. Now, this is very, uh... This is a very weird thing to recommend, because it's not even like a tournament. It's Wi-Fi on for glory, but, uh... Watch Kesev play and see how he takes advantage of stuff like that. And watch how patient he plays. Think about what you would do as Jigglypuff in the situations where Kesev is playing here. Now, let me see if I can find the situation in particular where you notice it a lot. Obviously, because he's playing a zoner like Snake, he's not approaching unless he needs to. But uh, I think you'll probably notice around here. Alright, he's running away from invulnerability. Oh, wow. <laughs> he didn't actually punish that. Okay. Now, where is it? I think it's on the last stock. Unless this is the wrong game. How far in? Oh, this is definitely the wrong game. <laughs> it's the first one that they played. Okay, yeah. Last stock here. 
So watch how K7 plays out this last stock. He probably gets rested. Oh, yeah. So just watch how Kasev plays this last stock. Think about what Jigs would do in this situation. Obviously, Hbox is doing something. But, uh... <clears throat> that might not have actually been the stock, but still. Going back over here. The pace you're playing at is extremely fast. Like, that's not a good thing. You need to, uh, there's definitely an optimal pace, not an optimal pace, but there's definitely a pace where you can sort of pressure your opponent into doing things. What else? Here, actually, I have a good, another good example of playing at a slower pace. Over here, can I get... Actually, it's going to take me forever, but on one of these matches, you can notice the pace that Zero plays when he's on ledge. He almost always gets off of ledge for free, and you can see he does it just by slowing down the pace. Anyways. Well, not even just that, but uh, there's also stuff when he's ledge trapping, where he specifically plays at a slower pace to force his opponents to use a very dumb option. Anyways. Or not force, but like encourage or bait him into it. Hopefully this is still helpful, because I'm kind of rambling, but uh... Yeah, you gotta react to that. Run up, down, smash. Up, B works too. That's better in that situation, because uh, down, smash wouldn't kill across the stage. As long as you can react to it on time, it's fine. Oh, close. Barely missing the down, or the forward. Ah, dash attack. I didn't pay attention to what kills you, but when, anal when analyzing sets, it often helps to write down everything that kills you so you know what to watch out for. It's very useful to uh, know all of your opponent's tools. Uh, just again, you missed the down tilt to jab lock. If you know... Well, down tilt is better if you can jab lock, but in general, like say it's too high percent to jab lock. Let's get this to lower percent. And you run up towards them like that. That hits even while they're bouncing on like down tilt, because you see these. Yeah, time red. Wrong there, where uh, you can often get your down tilt. Just bounce. Yeah, we'll get it and, uh, it does a bit of damage, and it works past jab lock percents, so it's good to know. Now to shield the knockback's good on it. Oh. Okay. This time you did a good job at. Okay. Can you keep him at ledge, though? No. You did a good job at the start, but you need to uh, slow it down to a pace where you can actually like hit their... Uh, not even just at a pace, but also be able to move well enough where you can hit whatever dumb option they use. That side B was very punishable that he did. You can just shield it. And he just stops right in front of you and just grab or whatever you want. Forward smash and air. Or down tilt. Always a good shield option. Or option on shield. That was him being dumb. There's no reason for him to neutral get up into it. Covering that well. Or covering side B well. 
Again, I don't know how to edge guard, or like I don't have an edge guarding flow chart for Fox, but at that distance, he can't. He can't just drift back onto ledge or and jump. He's too far away, so he has to either side B or up B. In that case, I'd probably hover by ledge with Nair, or and bait out a Nair because that will beat out his side B. And if he recovers low like that, then try to move towards him and punish that or NATO. I'm not sure. I haven't worked it out, but uh, I don't think it's worth preemptively NATOing. Even sometimes when you do preemptively NATO, NATO startup is so slow where side B might hit you. Oh, that dash tech's not good when he's on platform. You can still punish. Oh, too far away. You can still pressure people on platforms. Not as well as before, but still possible. Forward air up is good. You reacted a bit late there. So it wasn't true, but he didn't react to it. Or at least, at least he didn't air dodge. It's very... You don't see people air dodge there very often anyways, because it's a bad spot to be in, but uh... Yeah, again, don't forward smash when someone's right next to you. That's not one of your close range poke tools. Forward tilt's very, very good. You should probably be using it a bit more. Uh, if you don't already, you should always have your hand on the C-stick when you play, and you can make your controls adjust to that. Overall, a problem I just see with your general movement and neutral is that you don't have a good idea of how to move your character and what your poke tools are. And what's safe. And how you... There's a million... There's a million tips you can give people on neutral. I'm not that good at it personally. But uh, first thing in general, just for the game you should learn, is how to move. How much lag your moves have. How you can use moves to not have lag. Or like... What situations your moves are punishable. Stuff like that. And that's like one of the first things I would suggest to work on. Just to improve generally as a player. Alright, that's a good punish just because he landed on the platform. There's not too much else you can do there. Ooh. Very interesting combo. Again, I think you could have done a sort of the flowchart I mentioned earlier of hovering by ledge. Because <clears throat> if you miss like a f jump forward air, granted that jump forward that you tried never would have hit, but when you do miss it like you did, he recovers for free, and then you have to deal with being in disadvantage. Granted, you can take Meta Knight's disadvantage for, advan or, uh, for granted very easily because it's very strong. Okay, yeah, a lot of preemptive options that don't hit him, which is not good. Okay, yeah, that was a good job rolling behind. I mentioned before that you can roll behind, but Med Knight's roll kind of doesn't go far enough behind on Fox. At ledge, that's not true at all, because you don't get pushed back at ledge. You can always roll behind every character. Okay, barely clipping his side B. Not the greatest punish. I would honestly just jab. <clears throat> Not following up off the up air well enough. Oh, no punish. Again, I think that was a double buffer glitch that you got on the back air. If not, then just please don't back air there. It doesn't hit the opponent. It's very laggy. Alright, good. Can we see a flow chart? Okay. I actually liked that a lot more than your other ones. You still have flaws with your movement. But... This, standing on the platform here, you effectively used the same as hovering by ledge, where you hovered by ledge and just waited for his option, instead of preemptively just throwing out a move that won't hit. See, so you nared there, and then this is a good spot. You could hit him there with back air, but even if you don't, 
He's landing there. This is the situation I don't know how to hit personally. I would think back air would work, but obviously just didn't. So. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, that doesn't combo well. Ooh, that was almost pretty good. But you had a down air instead of an up air at the end. The up air probably wouldn't have hit. But, uh, it will sometimes. Like, that's very close to being the landing up air combo against Fox. Alright, can we see? Okay, good job. Yep, that's the flow chart I wanted to see from before. Holding ledge also works the same as hovering. The downside is that hovering oftentimes has you at a better spot. But they're both good. Was oh, that just a reset? Okay, that was just a bracket reset. 3 0 for you. Do you lose in the next set? Oh no, you won the tournament. Okay, that's probably a good time to stop because I don't think you would adapt to the changes I mentioned over the course of the next however many games. So hopefully that can help you. Hopefully I'm not a rambling mess. But, uh,. Thank you.